you. So, my first time on this property, I know that you're going to be shocked. 1959. My dad was the chairman of the Nisadak Bible Camp Board, and he had heard about these guys in Rapid City that had bought this place to make another camp. And so on our family vacation, when I was in sixth grade, we had to drive in and see what this place looked like. And so I can remember the road coming in was terrible. And it's a super highway now compared to what I remember. <laughs> Remember we drove in here, we didn't get out. There was some guy that was over here and, and uh, we just kind of looked around and thought, huh, this is, this is uh, where they're gonna start a new camp, so. The history of Outlaw Ranch starts about 200, 250 miles southeast of here in the town of Winter, South Dakota. In 1920, a young man by the name of Ben Butts arrived. This was the end of the railroad line before it went on to the Rosebud Reservation. He arrived there um, without much money, but willing to work. And he uh, shoveled snow um, from walkways of businesses that were and places eight foot deep snow drifts. Um, he did all kinds of odd jobs. And when he had saved up $134, he bought a peddler's license. And one report we found, he rented a corner of the livery stable and started selling goods out of that. By March, of 1922, he built his first store. It was a 16 by 20 foot building, um, roughly about the size of the, a Lakota cabin, not counting the porch. It was his uh, first building. Um, three months later, he built a 24 by 34 foot addition onto that. And two months later, he built a 72 by 50 foot addition. And by that time, he had 18 employees working for him. Um, he, these were just single rooms added one onto the other. And he bought items that he knew everybody was gonna need in large quantities. He would buy railroad car loads of things. Um, he was described as an early Sam Walton. On Saturdays, parking was at a premium. He hired cops to be to direct traffic. He was open to, to begin with for 24 hours a day and three hours on Sunday. After he had reduced, eliminated all of his competition, he cut back to 18 hours a day. Needless to say, some of his competition didn't like the way he operated. And one morning he came to work and someone had taken some old coal tar, black coal tar, and a paintbrush and had wrote, wrote outlaw on the side of his store. Well, he took that as a, a compliment and he changed the name of his store to the outlaw trading post. And he uh, believed in advertising. He was one that uh, was a very early proponent of advertising. Um, brown sugar, canned vegetables, canned fruit, stick matches, you know, today we don't think much of it, but 
you know, a hundred years ago, everybody needed wooden stick matches to start a fire. He would buy them by carload, yellow chore gloves. Any of you that have been around a farm, everybody has yellow chore gloves. He would buy these by the case load and consequently he could sell cheaper than anybody else. Um, hairpins, even tractors. And by 1928, he had personal and commercial assets of over a million dollars. He was doing $250,000 in volume when most businesses considered 20,000 a good year. He kept an inventory of $30,000 on hand. He said, I don't keep goods, I sell them. And in 1928, he was one of the top 10 individual income tax payers in the state of South Dakota. From the April 11, 1930 newspaper in winter, headlines, Outlaw Trading Post makes improvement. New building to be ready for use next Saturday. Hardware department to have entrances on First Street. And get this, a headline in the paper. Mm -hmm. Ladies restroom on first floor. They don't say anything about a men's restroom. Mm -hmm. I guess they use the alley, but anyway, Saturday is moving day at the Outlaw Trading Post if present plans are carried out for the hardware department. They will move into its new home, which is a new tile building to the north of the present quarters. Here a room 42 by 100 feet, that'd be bigger than this well-lighted, well-ventilated with an entrance off First Street will be devoted to hardware while a storeroom 32 by 50 feet to the west with a restroom for women, again, that seemed to be a big thing. It was 22 by 22 feet to open off the present ready-to-wear section, also built. The Outlaw Trading Post, which was started March 4th, 1920, will give the reader some idea of the growth of this general merchandise store. This company has always believed in advertising and the Tripp County Journal ran their first advertisement in this county, which was a four-line local about some strained honey. The first store was 20 by 24 feet, and they have increased their business with more advertising. The first order sent out from this little store was for 400 pounds of beet sugar, and this week they unloaded a carload of 600 sacks of flour. The new addition is built in a substantial way that will serve the needs for many years and shows the absolute faith of the owners of this large merchandise <coughs> enterprise and the future of our city. An article in the September 2nd, 1932 Deadwood Pioneer Times calls but the proprietor of the outlaw store of Winter and the man who demonstrated in less than a decade that the romance of business success might be attained even in these times. Check that date. This was the early 1930s. A time in U.S. history rarely associated with booming businesses. Yet during this decade, Butts had 79 employees working for him. At the height of his business, Butts opened stores in Wood, Dallas, Clearfield, and Carter. In addition, do you all have that picture? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know where it is? It's in your study. It's in there. <laughs> in addition to a packing plant in winter and a flour mill, and this is a 
an original flower sack from the outlaw flour mill. We went to the courthouse to try and figure out who owned how this property came into existence. And in 1902, 120 years ago, a man by the name of William Moore purchased a 160 acre of patented homestead from the government for $1,000. That's the first person that has a title on on this property was this William Moore. Um, over the next 30 years, there were many, it's same, it changed hands many times. And until 1932, when Jane Butts purchased the land here for what, from the, the people at the courthouse said that they thought it was $7,000. And it's really interesting because this is in 1932. Ben's name is not on this. It's Jane, the, a lady that, that bought it. His wife. Yes, his wife, yeah. Today, Outlaw's 190 acres. And we need to someday go back and try to figure out where those other 30 acres came from. But anyway, 1944, the original trading post burned down. Ben rebuilt it. He said he was down but not out. And after 27 years, Ben sold out and moved to Custer in 1947. This is Ben and his wife, Jane. Returning from a trip to Europe, Ben died on January 2nd, 1955, at the age of 78. 1920. 2021, the outlaw trading post in winter was tore down to make room for a parking lot. It is no longer there. In 1956, friends of ours, Vern Schleck and his dad, looked at buying this property and they decided Jane was trying to sell it after her husband died, that it was just too expensive. You couldn't make a living running cows on this property. But 1958, eight laymen from Rapid City signed a note for $10,000 to make the down payment to buy Outlaw Ranch. These were not pastors, they were, they were laymen. And over the years, two of these original men, Bob Hart, one of the original signers, and Lyle Peters, who became the secretary of the first group, they formed an association called the Lutheran Men's Bible Camp Association of Rapid City. And in 1959, volunteers from Rapid renovated the buildings for camp use. They went to Ellsworth Air Force Base. They got surplus beds. In a couple years, the could see that the, this was, they needed help. They needed somebody to come in. And so, 1962, they hired a young pastor by the name of Dick Borud to come and take over as the director. Um, if you're lucky, um, you'll get to meet Dick. He, uh, he spends his summers here in the Black Hills, and every Sunday, he and his wife, Cynthia, will be at, at Custer Lutheran Fellowship. Dick started something very new in camping, a very new uh, novel idea. He was one that he hired, trained, and here's the kicker, pay full-time summer staff. 
up until that time, everything was volunteer. So we can thank Dick that uh, he, he started. The name Lutheran Men's Bible Camp Association of Rapid City did not work very well on t-shirts and sweatshirts. <laughs> and when Dick came, he found the old sign, that, uh, the Outlaw Ranch sign in the track pile. He dug it out and he said, this is what we're gonna be called. This is the, our name. And he changed the name back to Outlaw Ranch. Here's something, you guys. One summer during staff training, the staff, that'd be you guys, built 19 A-frames. Two of them are still standing, one over here and one over here. Can you imagine? In one summer? In one summer, one staff training, so they were ready. So, anyway. I, have, I don't know. There was more. <laughs> there were more of them than that. But anyway, um, so if you haven't been here, if this is new, we've got some pictures here that will show you what summer is going to look like. You all learn to do the cooking outside? Uh -huh. All of you? the old trading post that <laughs> Shannon destroyed. <laughs> it was so, it was so hard to see that go. It was just such a nice place. And anyway, so you guys, if you haven't been here before, you, you don't know what you're missing. So, horses have always been big. Many, many kids. It's the first time that they've ever had a chance to be on a horse or be around a horse. So. In the 1970s, the old dining hall was remodeled. Um, the kitchen was we remodeled, and the old log lodge was also remodeled. In 1986, the, or the cabins up on the hill were built, a second shower house, the upper shower house, and the new sewer and, and the water system was done in 1986. That was a major, major project to get a new sewer and 
wires and stuff. In 1986, Halloween night, the old log lodge that stood up here on the hill um, burned to the ground. And in 1987, a new lodge was built. Bonnie and I worked here in 73, 4, and 75, and then I was gone, and then I was asked to come back in 86 when the old lodge burned, and we started that fall um, in November and December meeting with architects. There was a young young pastor from Hill City that was chairman of the Lutheran Outdoors Board. His name was Larry Peterson. <laughs> <laughs> He's been around a long time. Anyway, here's some pictures of the uh, lot. You guys all know what it looks like, um, but can we show this around town or other places? We took this picture with a called Step Letter. Um, <laughs> <laughs> or it's wrong. <laughs> 1988, we built Day Spring and the Lakota cabins uh, were added. <laughs> Recognize anyone? <laughs> This addition on the, this side of the, the old dining hall and where the new kitchen is, we uh, added added that. Um, the delicate family, a, a, a name you hear a lot in Custer, um, donated a good amount of money to remodel the kitchen, and that's why the delicate. Dining hall name is there. In 2000, we started remodeling the barn. This is what it looked like. As you all uh, know what it looks like today. So, who did the roof? The roof up there was done by a fly by night outfit out of. Oh, he's not listening. Talk about you. Outfit out of Flandreau came out here and put that metal and that cupola on the roof. Fly by night, that's great. Isn't it beautiful? Shannon's had a. He's got a quite a long history here too. So you guys all know what it's what it's like. Resident Goose Pop Block. Uh, oh, um, and things that you you won't be seeing, but this and the off season retreaters, quilters, scrapbookers. Unbelievable how much junk they bring up. <laughs> Some of the quilters. Uh, this is during um, well, look how beautiful those are. Yeah. 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 No, you can get them at Walmart. There's nothing I like better than to go around <laughs> and when they're good. sitting there and they're cutting up all, you know, and you say, Walmart had one just <laughs> like <laughs> that, and they were on sale. <laughs> anyway. Sew it back together again. Why? <laughs> anyway, the basketball court. Some of you, I don't know, you're probably too young. I've heard the name Janet Carbonet. Janet Carbonet in the 80s was, uh, was from Lake Mills, Minnesota. And, uh, her team won the state women. 
women's basketball three years in a row. Janet went, out, went on to play D1 basketball and up until a couple years ago had the scoring record men and women in the state of Minnesota. So she uh, is married to Al and Janet thought we needed a basketball court here and so she and Al donated the money to put in the basketball court. The Welcome Center. Some of you, hopefully, you've all read this in recognition and grateful recognition of Damaris Matheson Nesham. You will see Damaris and her husband Herb here um, off and on. They've been very important to, to donating to Outlaw. Um, they've provided money for a lot of a lot of what we have. Um, and Jody. 30-some-year-old um, daughter of Damaris died of uh, cancer, and this was uh, done in memorial to Jody. 2019, we built the overnight camp shelter. We had a generous donation from the Negabauer family down at Hermosa to um, add hiking trails, and we've had a couple different AmeriCorps teams um, work on that. I think we have six and a half miles now of hiking trail on our property. We have an, a resident elk <laughs> herd. Have you all seen them? Mm -hmm. oh, gotta well, get up you early. Got, you gotta get up early. Then. Where are they so, at? In the pasture. <laughs> yeah. You see them every now and then in the pasture early. In the so and then in 2011, what some would consider the most important building on the site, <laughs> the shop was built. <laughs> 2022, the building we're in now. since the 1930s. The name is still used because it maintains contact with the concept of Christianity that is often forgotten. There were many places and many crowds where Jesus was unwelcome, an outlaw in his own right. John 1, 11 tells how Jesus came to his own home and the people would not receive him. He even suffered death on the cross, a death reserved for outlaws. For his sake, Outlaw Ranch has been a reminder that all people can be outlaws for Christ. Which 
tradition that has continued for over 60 plus years and will continue as long as outlaws continue to gather at Outlaw Ranch. Questions? There's going to be a quiz, you know, before your first meeting. Uh, and so, hopefully, uh, I didn't notice anybody writing down notes, but I hope you have good memories. Thanks, Mark. You're welcome.